Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, my dear sisters and my brothers. Welcome to the first installment of the Under 9 Minutes series. The companions who flirted and courted the wives of the messenger and how Allah put an end to this betrayal. You will not hear this kind of talks in the mainstream talks or preachings for a few reasons. Of these reasons is the over-idealizing or idealizing of the companions. And uh, this over-idealization or just idealizing somebody is forbidden in Islam even for messengers and prophets. We cannot do that and Allah has forbade us to do that. Also the danger of idealizing the companions and make them the best ever to walk on earth. And there are debates in our books, the scholars and Salafism, whether they debate are the companions better than the angels or not. And this is a huge danger. Also based on a hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim, uh, of course a man-made hadith, what they say that the messenger of Allah says that the best of people are his generation than those after them, i.e. the followers or tabi'in, than those that follow the tabi'in, i.e. three generation from the three generations from the messenger of Allah. When you calculate this time capsule of the three generations, you will come to the time of Al-Bukhari, Muslim Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and the beginning of the Abbasid dynasty, exactly when Islam was designed by humans and manipulated to a few advantages and agendas. I've already mentioned this in other talks. So my dear sisters and my brothers, have there been companions that were nasty, horrible, miserable, terrible? Of course they are. Are all the companions really trustworthy, honorable, dignified, and all that kind of stuff? No, not all of them. And to, to make you believe that all the companions are trustworthy, good people, honorable, and all that kind of stuff, they always mention a part of the Quran uh, that Allah has praised them and uh, has given them a high status. And this, but that's not true. Allah spoke about a particular group, and then he said that group I, I, Allah is pleased with them when, for what they did in that particular matter. Not all uh, of the companions. But anyway, the, I don't want this to eat in our times. So, the companions are all of them trustworthy, reliable, good character, honorable, dignity. is a huge lie. Allah in the Quran has spoken great things uh, negative about the companions. One of them is this story of those companions that used to Subhanallah, they conjured up a technique to flirt and court the wives of the messenger. Listen to what Allah says. This story, the whole of the story, is in Surah Al Ahzab. Surah Al Ahzab is the Surah number 33, and you can go to it from the Ayah 53 to 56. Allah talks to them and says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, you who have believed. So this is particular to people, uh, companions that were with the, um, uh, with the messenger. Allah didn't say who of these companions were. He did not say hypocrites. He did not say the, the people of the book. These people believe. And since Allah did not name them, to me and to everyone else, it encompasses all of the companions. He tells them, Do not enter the houses of the Prophet. The companions have, uh, used to have this horrible technique. They would just walk in into any house of the messenger. Without his permission, they would just walk in there. And the excuse that they used to do is whatever reason. Even if Rasulullah was not there, but their intention, they would always walk to the beautiful wives of the messenger, namely Aisha, Hafsa, Zainab, uh, and few others. So all those young pretty girls, the, the wives of the messenger, those men, the companions would walk into their houses without permission. Then Allah tells them, do not enter the houses of the uh, Nabi, the uh, Prophet, except when you are in, permitted in for a purpose, for only one reason, and that reason is to have food. As I said before, that they used to just enter any time for any reason. They didn't care how the wives were dressed up and things like that. And then what they, what they did was, when they are invited to food, they would go there early, before even the wives could get the dinner ready. And then Allah tells them, without waiting for its preparation, don't go there and wait for it to be cooked. You come when the food has been cooked, and you eat and go. Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِنْ إِذَا دُعِيتُمْ فَادْخُلُ But if and when you are invited in, then go inside. And when you have eaten, 
live and disperse without seeking to remain for conversation. They used to find any excuse to stay for a longer time in the house of their prophet. Why they did that? To chat up his wives. And then Allah says, فَإِذَا طَعَمْتُمْ فَانْتَشِرُوا وَلَمْ سْتَعْنِسِينَ لِحَدِيثِ إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ يُؤْذِ النَّبِي And when you have eaten, leave and disperse without seeking to remain for conversation, indeed, that kind of behavior, your behavior, was hurtful and offensive to the Prophet. And he is very shy. He shies away from kicking you out of the house, but Allah does not shy away from doing that. And thou, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now reveals why they were there. And then he says, and he says it in a very, not accusative way, but in a subtle way. He says, and when you ask them, i.e. the wives, you the companions, they would not ask the messenger for something. They would go direct to his wives. They, they, they didn't care. Because the goal was apparent, Allah says, and when you ask them, i.e. the wives, for anything, al is for anything that they need, for food or anything else, Allah says, ask them from behind a hijab, the permission, and this is where the hijab women, Muslim women, should cover themselves in hijab. Allah was not talking about the dress. Allah was talking about a partition. Why would they ask for that, ya Allah? Allah says, that is purer and cleaner for your hearts and their hearts. Because, and this is a huge, ay, ya 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 ya. All this vile game that the men were playing on Rasulullah to be there, just to, just to walk in his house and talk to his wives, was all to chat up the wives. And Allah tells them, do this because it is pure for your heart so that you don't fall for the women and also their hearts the wives of the messenger of Allah used to enjoy being chatted up it's always people always like it when they are still pulling when they can pull at the opposite sex and then Allah says and it is not acceptable for you to harm the messenger of Allah or and now comes the reason why they would go to the messenger or that you ever marry his wives after him Ever. And Allah tells them, you cannot marry his wife, so cut it short. You court or you don't court. You see, when they were bust open, these men and the wives of the Rasulullah, they tried to play it down and claim, oh, that was not my intention. I never actually looked at these men. Now Allah tells them, if you disclose anything or you conceal it, Allah knows it all. Allah is knowing of everything. And then once this rule was uh, injected, Allah turns to the wives of Rasulullah and he tells them there is no blame on the Prophet's wives if they appear unveiled before their father, their sons, the brothers, the mothers, the sisters, and all these things. You can find them in uh, Surah 33 from 53 to 56. Allah ends this betrayal uh, by, by commanding the Prophet, uh, the wives of the Prophet, what taqeen Allah and fear Allah. This was humans who tried to play a trick on Rasulullah, but Allah put an end to it. I will post and I will send this, uh, my notes to the group, inshallah. And if you listen to this on YouTube, just send me an email and I'll send you my further notes that will explain to you the whole thing. Again, this is your brother, Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.